And good afternoon to the head table. Good afternoon, all. My name is Kira thompson -Aid. I sit as president of the Dominica Association of Industry and Commerce. The DAIC Board of Directors, staff, and members thank the government of the Commonwealth of Dominica for the opportunity to contribute at today's consultation. Chad has a jump drive with our presentation, which will make it a little bit easier for me to move along at a much faster pace. Our time is limited and our contribution is vast, and as we all know, time is money. Recently, on two separate occasions, the Honorable Prime Minister Chastney of St. Lucia has pointed out four relevant points on the impact of Hurricane Maria on Dominica. The immediate depreciation on the value of our asset. We will now get about 60 cents to possibly 80 cents if we're lucky on the dollar. Looting is uninsurable. It will cost $1.50 to rebuild properly, excluding cost of losses from, rebuild, from looting. ROI, our return on investment, key from the cottage industry go all the way up to the top companies on this island. With a severe contraction in business, there is a long-term economic impact on the country. Assets of the state have also been affected. The PS Prevo in her ministry has worked very hard to highlight that to us today. Our nature island tourism product has been drastically impacted to minimal capacity. Dominica is not the only island affected in the hurricane season of 2017. Remittances have witnessed a contraction as the diasporan migrants in neighboring islands no longer have the capacity to remit as they once did. Trade corridors, which P.S. Thomas also alluded to, saw agriculture exports decreasing and the remittances from those also diminishing. Competitive, competitiveness and risk is what private sector knows best. At the recent ECCB, Second Growth and Resilience Dialogue with Social Partners last week, Governor Antoine stated, we need to position ourselves to withstand, adapt, and rapidly recover. I thought it summed it up pretty effectively. Protect the economic environment, and that doesn't just start with the business house or the cottage industry. It doesn't just start with private sector. Protect businesses by creating a financial cushion. Our friend from Sajiko Life and General Agent for Sajiko General spoke to that. Key to this are business continuity plans, which I'm going to refer to as BCPs going by from here, and risk and insurance management strategies. We've all heard this. However, like I mentioned from Prime Minister Chastney's remarks, looting is not insurable. Law and order plays a crucial role in protecting our economic environment, and we all benefit from a healthy, robust economic environment. National strategy of crime abatement and supporting policy must be strong, coherent, and extremely effective. This is critical to ensure our BCBs, your BCBs, can be implemented and not interrupted as they once were. High finance requirements, it's a general theme with rebuilding, reinvestment. We've heard it all throughout the course of this morning into this afternoon from pretty much every single presenter. Support is necessary just as our partner from Domlek mentioned this morning. Financing is required. Key for eco-resilience is strong institutions, and I was very pleased to hear, I believe about 90% of our presenters, public and private, civic and academic, state this. It is a necessity to bolstering our socio-economic, geopolitical environment. Fiscal incentives through well, through well structured and specified tax regimes, because we cannot take away everybody's source of revenue, correct? Designed to foster a competitive economic landscape better positioned financially to build climate resilience and mitigate future risks on such a scale as we have been impacted by. We are a partner in the development of our country. And as we noted today, this is not a singular task. Building resistance holistically for the nation requires each sector of society to play its role and adapt to the changed environment, because it is changed. In the face of continuous and increasing risk, business con continuity 
has to be regularly updated to match the adjustments identified by our environmental risks. Communication is key, and we thank our telecom partners who are also members of the chamber for their fantastic job in ensuring that communication could be reinstated within such a short period of time for most of us. With employees, we must communi communicate, government regulators, customers, everyone in general. Business continuity is about long-term survival. Personally, I've been in business my entire life. I'm not gonna tell you my age though. And I work for a company that's been in business for 108 years. We need to continually assess and reassess the risks that we face from climate change ensuring strong institutional backing, because if you don't have a strong backbone, the rest of the body will fail. Identify preferred supply chain partners. Determine how our resources are used and reused. And this came up after the discussion with Dominic and Dewasco, our national utility companies. Capture our intellectual capacity, such as our culture, which Mr. Marie spoke to. Recycling, solar farms, wind farms. Has anybody assessed if the Rosalie Bay wind um, vein is still standing? Our socioeconomic landscape has shifted. It's 2018. The evident impacts of climate change have shown us the negative impacts on our worker productivity, our health system, resource availability, water quality, and our geopolitical st stability and sustainability. We are a SID, a small island developing state. Within the large pond, our contribution is minimal, but our internal contribution can be amazing. As preconditions for economic growth, these elements must form part of our adaptation and business recovery strategies. Recovery is regrowth which Mrs. John Baptist spoke to very well in the beginning of her presentation, and she also showed with her slides from Digicel. Following Maria, we encouraged our members to think outside of the box, even whilst rapidly recovering, and especially whilst recovering. Insurance and risk management strategies through BCPs, a lack of law and order, immediately interrupts the BCP and strategies, and we witnessed that. Maximize events, investments in energy efficiency, which I spoke to, as did our utility companies and persons on the floor. Water conservation and waste reduction. If a city feels clean, its people feel clean. Make our business organizations more resilient. This requires specific duty structuring and support, and I don't necessarily mean singularly financial support. Community-based programs must be holistic. Our communities are our customers. If our customers are not safe, neither are we. Our members have invested a lot into corporate social responsibility, knowing that what we do to enhance our communities enhances our economic environment and betters the lives of all. Strategic roadmaps through business recovery strategies. Diagnostic tools, especially for the MSME sector. Real-time data. This is a huge and severe gap in our region, data. Nobody has data. Reporting is key. And for DEIC, we do that through our annual AGM and quarterly reports, as well as continuous communication with our members. KPIs, measurement tools. How do we know what we're doing is actually, our key performance indicators are actually kicking in. Communication, whilst challenged in the immediate days following Hurricane Maria, came back on stream, and by September 29th, 2017, DAIC had implemented its business recovery strategy for its membership and private sector at large. As we enter phase two, because I call it phase two, support and partnerships locally, regionally, and internationally must continue. At the recent dialogue, Mrs. Uh, Tina Alexander of Lifeline Ministries referenced the process in the first phase, as I call it, similar to that of a funeral, where people come in, donors come in, relief agencies come in under their contractual time limits. They come to our funerals. There's a period of bereavement. What happens thereafter? 
the AIC's recovery strategy for 2018. Join us on Thursday as we launch our Arise Network, where we partner with the Office of Disaster Management. Arise, it's through UNISTER, United Nations Disaster. It facilitates exchange of experience and knowledge on how to implement tangible disaster risk reduction projects through seven work streams. Disaster Risk Management, DRM, Investment Matrix, there's your data again, Benchmarking and Standards, your monitoring, your reporting, Education and Training, HR and Capacity Enhancement, Legal and Regulatory, your regulatory framework, Urban Risk Reduction and Resilience, your vulnerable, Insurance, your financial cushion. Reinstate the joint coordinating team, public-private partnership. This was affected after Hurricane Irma hit, Irma hit our neighbors to the north of us. And it was going well until we got hit. Create a store subcommittee with access to a database of available critical supplies which DAIC can facilitate and create that link during the hurricane season with the goal to protect, mobilize, and utilize as required. BCPs. We want to see the creation and implementation of BCBs and we'll do the training to ensure that our members and wider private sector can access this information and build their capacity in this regard. Advocate security during a weather system and post-disaster. Our government, because they are of us, must be prepared to deploy the necessary crews and our nation made aware, because our nation was not made aware for varying reasons, that post-disaster an automatic state of emergency is declared. Insurance helps mitigate risks. However, it must be appropriate and it must be sufficient. 25% of businesses after disaster do not resume operations. 25% of the contribution to the country's GDP is removed. GDP is removed. It is critical that businesses, those with capacity posted a disaster in the recovery effort, are integrated into the purchasing of materials, the supplying of stocks, trade within the country is crucial. Engagement is necessary. And all of the stakeholders who presented here this morning and into this afternoon stated this very clearly. For us as a private sector, not just AIC membership, private sector on a whole, from your cottage industry, go all the way up to the very top with the biggest business and the largest number of employees, must engage in discussions, planning, and recovery, both before and after an event. A communication protocol with government and disaster response managers is required. There must be a continuous collaboration between all partners. There must be links. And with that said, we invite you to join us for our Business Recovery Expo on Wednesday, where we will have the necessary links provided for our community and private sector at large. We'd like to thank the Government of the Commonwealth of Dominica for the work done thus far on the ground. We know the time and the investment, members of Cabinet, the Ministers, and our Permanent Secretaries have made to get us to this point today. And we appreciate the opportunity to have our house, our voice heard. Thank you.